Sevillano, and this video lecture is about APA referencing. In this video lecture, we will look at two things. We will define what referencing is and justify its importance to academic writing. Secondly, we will look at the general guidelines for referencing, paying particular attention to in-text and end-of-text referencing. So, what is referencing? When writing an assignment or essay, you are usually required to acknowledge the influence of other authors on your work or your sources of information. This is what we call referencing. So do you have to reference everything you refer to in an assignment? The answer is no. You don't have to reference anything that is considered common knowledge, such as dates in history, scientific truths, election results, or general knowledge. For example, if you make reference to the fact that the sun rises in the east, you don't have to reference the source of that information, as it is general knowledge. What you do have to reference is information that is not common knowledge, like opinions, theories, statements, or claims of other writers, and data, such as statistics, graphs, population figures, and financials. For instance, if you want to quote the population of New Zealand, then you must indicate where you obtain the information from. This is because other sources may quote different figures. Now, depending on the discipline or university you are in, there will be a prescribed referencing format. There are many other systems of referencing. Some of these are the Harvard system, the MLA system, Chicago, and Oxford. We will look specifically at the APA style of referencing, which is commonly used in many universities worldwide. APA stands for American Psychological Association. It is the system which has been devised by this organization to be used in its publications. Now, why is it important to reference? Well, firstly, it is a good way to distinguish between your ideas and someone else's. Since very little of what goes into your essay will be common knowledge, referencing is essential. University assignments are all about using the ideas of other people to support your views or opinions. One of the most frequent comments made by markers is, what is your source? To say that I read it somewhere is not acceptable nor sufficient. Secondly, referencing is a research skill that allows you to show the marker the range and quality of your reading. A good assignment discusses a broad range of sources on the topic. Furthermore, good referencing directs your readers to the sources you use. When you refer to another work, your reader knows where to go to read more. Finally, proper referencing prevents others of accusing you of plagiarism, which is considered a very serious offense, especially in academe. Let's now turn to the general guidelines for referencing. Any reference occurs in two places in your assignment. First, it appears in the text. This is known as in-text referencing. Secondly, it appears in the reference list at the end of your assignment. This is called end-of-text referencing. Let's have a look at in-text referencing. This takes two forms. Direct quotations, when you use the author's exact words, or summarizing when you put someone else's ideas into your own words. Now, there are two types of direct quotations, short and long. Short quotations are quotations of 40 words or less and use quotation marks to indicate 
which are the exact words of the author. Immediately after the second quotation mark, indicate the source, date of publication, and page number or numbers where the information can be found. Let's look at this example. Observational learning can be defined as, open quote, the phenomenon whereby people develop patterns of behavior by observing the actions of others, close quote. Open bracket, the author's surnames, Moen and Minor, comma, followed by the year of publication, 1998, comma, and then the page number, page 147, close bracket, full stop. A long quotation is more than 40 words long. No quotation marks are used, but the quoted text should be indented five spaces from the left. Here is an example. The highlighted area is the long quotation. You can clearly see how it is indented five spaces from the left-hand margin. Also, you can see the absence of quotation marks. When writing your assignment, you usually have to write using double spacing or one and a half spacing, depending on the requirements of your department. Whichever spacing you use in your own text, this must carry through into the quotation. So, if you are writing using double spacing, then the quotation must also be double spaced. And the font size for the quotation must be the same as the font size in the rest of the assignment. One final thing to note is that at the end of the long quotation, the full stop comes at the end of the text and not after the in-text reference. There is no full stop after the in-text reference. Notice also that the in-text reference comes at the end of the quote. Okay, now let's have a look at how much of our assignment should be direct quotes. A good rule of thumb is not to have more than 5 to 10% of your assignment in direct quotes. When you make an in-text reference in your assignment, go straight to the end of the reference list and write down the complete details of the reference there and then. This will make compiling your reference list so much easier and save you time. Summarizing is the other form of in-text referencing. As stated earlier, when you use someone else's ideas, concepts, or data, but not their exact words, you are summarizing a source. You discuss someone else's work in your own words using your own sentence structure. So even though you are using your own words, you are still using someone else's ideas, so you must acknowledge the source. Let's look at this example of how a direct quote differs from a summary. Here we can clearly see there is a direct quotation from Moen and Minor, followed by the in-text reference for that quotation. Then we have a summary of what a sale said. with the in-text reference for that summary. Let's now look at the overall guidelines for organizing the reference list. First, arrange the entries alphabetically according to the author's surname or the name of the article or organization in the absence of an author. Each reference should be single-spaced, but leave a space between references. If the reference runs onto the second or subsequent lines, these should be indented five spaces. Remember that your reference list should direct the reader as closely as possible to the information cited in your discussion. Think of your reference list as a signpost which directs your readers to the sources you have consulted while doing your assignment. Periodicals, which are published on a regular basis, include journals, magazines, and newspapers, while non-periodicals include books, reports, and brochures. Let's have a look at the referencing format of a non-periodical source first. 
Here we see that in text, the information given is the author's surnames, the year of publication, and the page number. In the reference list, the following information is given. Only the first letter of the first word in the title is capitalized. Now, let's look at the referencing format for a periodical source. Periodicals today may either be in hard copy or in electronic version. Note the format of a periodical source in a reference list, hard copy. Only the first letter of the first word in the title is capitalized. Compare this with the earlier example of a non-periodical source. Do you see how the details are different? Now most of the journal articles you access for your assignments will be found in the university databases. For an electronic copy of a journal article retrieved from a database, watch the video lecture on referencing electronic sources. Here we will deal with all sorts of online reference issues. So, let's recap what we have covered in this lecture. We defined what referencing is and justified its importance to academic writing and we looked at the general guidelines for referencing, particularly in-text and end-of-text referencing. Please don't forget to watch the video lecture on referencing electronic sources, as many sources these days are online, and getting these references correct is important. I hope this video lecture has given you a clearer idea of what referencing is all about. If you stick to the basic principles, you will find that it is a relatively easy part of your assignment.